Then Dion showed the heroine part of the text where it was written that the Raviolt spell uses the demon's mana. Therefore, he cannot influence the priests. Moreover, mages and those who are able to use aura undergo minor changes. Those who use aura stop getting younger as soon as they reach adolescence, while magicians stop getting younger as soon as they become children. That is why Dion and the Duke stopped getting younger, which means that they are not in danger of death. It also said that he was once a pet of demons. Anyone who pets Reviolt immediately falls under his influence. Therefore, it is better to stay away from him, even if he looks like a cute animal. Sena paid special attention to the words about not petting him. After all, no normal person can get close to a demon, no matter how nice he is. Then Dion and the Duke remembered the cat they were petting. It was a Snow White stray cat. Having received at least some clue, they went in search of the demon. Sena, Dion, and Carlman went through all the White Street cats to find the monster. But there was something else strange. Although demons usually kill people, all the children in the police department were safe, without any injuries. Therefore, this demon is really just having fun. While Sena and the Duke were discussing this issue, Dion caught another white cat. It was a huge cat with blue eyes, but this one turned out to be wrong. Then Sena suggested asking the hunters for help, but the Duke wanted to keep the penetration of demons into the capital a secret. The heroine clarified that you can contact a specific person. She said that since Robin was already in the know, she could help them. Dion asked who Robin is and why he knows everything. But Sena did not have time to answer, as they were interrupted by Ellen. She approached in a friendly manner to say hello, and in her hands was a white cat. During the tea party, all three of them were staring at a suspicious cat. Noticing their strange looks, the neighbor asked what happened. While Sena tried to get out, the Duke and Dion watched the cat with shining eyes. Suddenly, Dion attacked the cat. However, the cat turned out to be more agile and did not get caught. Carlman did not miss the opportunity to grin. He rushed after the cat to catch it, thereby showing his superiority. The Duke almost reached his pet. However, the cat successfully dodged this time too. The Duke also failed to catch the demon. This time it was Dion who grinned. Ellen watched the children, thinking they were just playing. Sena also pretended that they were just children. She was alone tormented by one question, why the Reviolt spell did not work on Ellen. According to the book on demons, this is only possible if Ellen has incredible holy power. Since the neighbor was the main character of a short story from a past life, Sena was sure that everything was so. The guys spent all this time unsuccessfully chasing the demon. They dropped almost all the chairs and the table, but they couldn't even touch the cat. Seeing the mess the children made, Ellen was shocked. Sena scolded them for inappropriate behavior in someone else's house. In this chaos, only the cat sat calmly as if what was happening had nothing to do with him. From the sudden cry, Dion's eyes filled with tears. Sena did not expect this. In a panic, she did not know what to say or how to calm the boy down. Dion could barely hold back his tears. The Duke was also shocked by Dion's reaction. Not knowing how to calm Dion down, she told him to follow Sasha's example. She explained to Carlman that she had to come up with a new name for him so that Ellen wouldn't guess anything. The Duke was unhappy with the new name. Dion could barely hold back his tears. The cat seemed to be mocking everyone. Looking at these three, Sena didn't know what to do. She didn't understand what was expected of her. Suddenly, the cat ran away somewhere. He ran around the whole room, deliberately teasing the guys. Helen also didn't know how she could help. Sena continued to pretend that these were her cousins. Only now, she began to understand how difficult it is for mothers to look after their children. Suddenly, Ellen told the heroine that her cousins were very cute and like her and she clarified that they had similar views, which sounded extremely implausible. Suddenly, the cat opened the door himself. Seeing this, Ellen assumed that he wanted to go play. Sena remembered their conversation in the library. That book said it was a demon, but it looks like a regular cat. Then they decided to check all the cats in the city. But the demon also has the ability to change his appearance. And also in the book, it was indicated that the method of capturing Reviolte was slightly different from others. The method was simple enough. To catch it, you had to play with it as long as possible. However, you need to play as much as Reviolta himself wants. And since the author had never encountered such a demon, he could not write how long it took. The author advised readers to check this themselves. This is where the memories end, and back to the harsh reality where these three are still chasing the cat. Dion continued to address the Duke as Sasha. Rashid got angry every time and told him not to call him that again. 
At this time, Sena was almost exhausted, as they had been running for several hours. The girls shouted after Dion and Carlman so that they should not just chase the demon, but try to drive him into a corner. However, the guys were already far enough away and didn't hear. Barely breathing, Sena shouted after them so that they would at least listen to what she was saying. Eventually, her strength gave out and she stopped. Looking around, she realized that she was in an abandoned area and assumed that the demon had lured them there on purpose. Suddenly, children's voices were heard, but it was not the Duke and Dion. While she was looking around in search of the source of the sound, something flew past her at high speed. This something seemed to be drawing a circle around Sena at great speed. At some point, the sounds of children's voices enveloped her from all sides. Suddenly, the same cat appeared in front of her, slowly approaching Sena and offering to play together. The girl was horrified when she heard her name from the mouth of the demon. But the cat continued to look at her with an innocent look. Suddenly, he ran away again. The girl didn't even have time to do anything. The heroine tried in every possible way to calm herself so as not to succumb to fear. The demon kept repeating that Sena should play with him. Realizing that there was no other way out, the enraged girl decided to accept the offer. Having made a decision, she ran after the cat. The demon, continuing to run away, threatened Sane with the lives of the boys. He said that if the girl slowed down, he would eat them both. Having reached some abandoned houses, Sena stopped abruptly. The unconscious body of the little duke floated in the sky. The demon took pleasure in seeing Sena suffer. Seeing the girl's concern, he lifted the boy even higher. The heroine tried to shout to the duke. Finally, Carlman opened his eyes. Realizing that he was in zero gravity, the boy was very scared. He looked around, trying to understand what was happening. The demon was having fun, moving his body with the help of magic. Reviolt then abruptly lifted and then let go of the duke. Sena ran to the duke in a cold sweat, so that if she fell, she would catch him. The bodies of her dead comrades stood before her eyes, those who left her forever. She didn't want to experience the feelings again when people close to you die right before your eyes. Whatever she did, she had to save Sena the duke, but she didn't have time this time either. The body fell to the ground with a crash. Seeing the little duke lying on the floor, Sena felt horror. She fell to her knees in a stupor. Grief overwhelmed her head. She reproached herself for being weak this time too. Suddenly, Dion's voice came from behind her. Little Dion, with a mocking tone, again called the Duke Sasha and asked why he was hanging there. Using magic, he lifted the Duke up again. Carlman was furious because he had already told him many times not to call him by that name. Dion recalled that it was only thanks to him that the Duke was still alive. And now, he said with a grin that since he had already saved the Duke, it was time to cancel his magic. After canceling the magic, Carlman plopped down on the ground again. The demon, watching them from the side, grinned. Having finished his fun, the cat said goodbye and left. Sena rushed after him. This time she decided to use a mana stone. The demon was sure that this time he would be able to escape. However, the heroine unexpectedly threw a stone at him. The mana stone exploded and caused significant damage to the demon. The cat lost consciousness. While he was immobilized, Sena calmly approached. Having finally reached him, the girl could not believe her eyes because this was an S-rank demon and he could not get caught so easily. Her fears were confirmed. The demon was just pretending. Suddenly, he started talking. He said that he had not seen Sena for a long time and asked if she was still looking for that thing. The girl was shocked that the demon knew her, but Reviolte did not explain anything, only said that he would fulfill one of her wishes because she managed to win one of his games. The stunned girl continued to ask how he knew her, but the demon said that he would answer this question only if the girl used her desire to find out the answer. Then Sena refused and made a wish for everyone to return to normal. Having fulfilled his promise, the demon left. By that time, Carlman and Dion had caught up with Sena. But despite the fact that the demon had to lift the spell, they were still small. Hearing Reviolta's answer that the girl, when making a wish, did not indicate that she wanted everything to return to normal right now. The heroine flew into a rage. In parting, the demon said that he always keeps his words and disappeared. After this, the duke asked Sena what happened. It was difficult for the girl to explain everything, but one thing was clear. It was all over. Suddenly, something happened to Dion. He lost consciousness. His face looked painful. He woke up already at home. Next to him was a worried Sena. Confused, he looked away and explained that it was just a fever. According to him, 
It's common for him to use too much mana. All he needed to recover was some sleep. Suddenly, Sena asked if he wasn't curious. After all, all this time the heroine was tormented by the question of why demons continue to appear near her house. Moreover, this time Dion suffered. But from all that was said, the guy only emphasized that Sena was worried about him. The girl was dumbfounded by this turn of events. She didn't understand how Dion didn't realize he could have died. But the guy was in seventh heaven just because Sena cared about him so much. Looking at him, the heroine got the feeling that the guy had no sense of self-preservation. Taking advantage of the fact that he was now in the body of a child, Dion laid his head on Sena's lap. Excusing himself by saying that he was sick, he asked to be allowed to lie there for a little while. Looking at him, Sena thought that now Dion would really act like a little child. That's why she decided today to let him do as he wanted. Sitting like this with Dion, she remembered her cousins. She hadn't seen them for a long time. The last time they saw each other was at their grandfather's funeral. At first, they came often, but after a quarrel between grandfather and aunt over the rights to the house, they stopped coming. Thinking about them, Sena couldn't help but wonder if everything was okay with them. Hearing the heroine's story, Dion said that he also remembered the past, about the time when he was about seven years old. At that time, his mother passed away. Hearing about this, Sena was petrified. She did not know what to say and only expressed her condolences. To console him, she reminded him that he still had his father. However, Dion said that he had not seen him for a long time. But he didn't miss him, since he was never a worthy husband and a good father. At the same time, Dion partly understood his father, because he had a lot to do. But Sena didn't understand. She believed that the boss was to blame for his son. When asked by Dion whether the heroine knows his father well, Sena replied that not very well. She saw him only twice, and both meetings were not pleasant. Hearing about this, Dion looked at Sena with his big, interested eyes in such a way that even without words, it was clear that he wanted to know the details. Since it was not a secret, she decided to tell Dion. She said that the first time she met the head of the guild was when her parents disappeared. The first person to inform her of her parents' disappearance due to an accident during a mission was her grandfather's colleague. The second who brought this news was the knight, and the third was the boss. The heroine realized how bad everything was as soon as she saw the face of the head of the guild. He regretted that they could no longer continue the investigation. Having finished her story, she added that, as she had said earlier, the meeting was not pleasant. Looking at Dion, the girl realized that this was the first time they communicated like this. They ate together. We spent quite a lot of time together. But this was their first sincere conversation, even though at the very beginning she did not want to get close to him out of the purest awakenings. Now, the guy has become not just a friend for Sena, but a rather close friend. In any case, the heroine believed that under those circumstances, the head of the guild did everything in his power. After listening to Sena's story, Dion turned to the duke who was lying on another sofa. Sena thought that he was already asleep, but Dion insistently asked him to tell about himself. But Carlman didn't want to. Dion tried to provoke him, but he did not give in and suggested going to bed so that in the morning he could go to the library again to look for information about Reviolt, because they never returned to their real appearance. However, Dione didn't really care. In contrast, the Duke urgently needed to return to his age, because he had quite a lot to do besides managing the duchy. He was very depressed that while he was in the body of a child, work continued to accumulate. Sena tried to calm him down by saying that his parents would probably take care of the affairs of the duchy in his absence. But Carlman interrupted her, saying that they had died and all their relatives were also dead. Sena again stepped on another mine. She froze in place, not knowing what to say. But the Duke reassured her by saying that everything was fine. In order to change the topic, the heroine said that tomorrow they would definitely find all the necessary information in the library but now they should go to sleep. Then the Duke, realizing Sena's uncomfortable position, asked how she was going to sleep. In order not to disturb Dion and not to disturb Carlman, she replied that she could easily not sleep even for three days. The Duke also could not sleep. He decided to talk a little with the heroine and asked if she remembered that day, the day he encountered a nightmare. He said it was his cousin. More precisely, she was the daughter of the man who tried to kill him. It was because of his uncle that Carlman could not feel safe in his own estate. Only a few people supported him, and only thanks to them 
the Duke managed to survive. However, his relatives tried to kill even those few who took his side. Then the young Duke realized that he must defend himself on his own. A lot has happened since then, but it wasn't the Duke who killed Serena. His uncle did this because he believed that his family would rather die than become powerless slaves. However, since everything happened precisely because of him, Carlman could not consider himself completely innocent. The story shocked Sena. Having finished his story, the Duke added that the heroine should not worry about him taking her house by force. Sena just nodded in response. But suddenly he felt alarmed, not understanding why the Duke suddenly started talking about the house. Carlman clarified that he knows about the rumors that are circulating about him, and that is why he says that there is no need to worry so much. Sena had long considered him a decent person, but she was upset by the fact that he did not talk about the reasons for the appearance of demons in the capital. In order to reassure the heroine, he even swore that he would not harm people without a particular reason. After these words, Sena realized that all this time, the Duke was worried that she was not comfortable around him. Then she asked him if he told the secret about his uncle just to calm her down. The Duke did not answer directly, but only said that this was not a secret since the entire elite knew about it. And yet the heroine was sure that it was not easy for Carlman to talk about this. After thinking a little, he said that it seemed to him that the girl was afraid of him because she even said that she would not approach him again, but the girl didn't remember anything like that. The Duke clarified that it was in his mansion. Realizing that the girl really didn't remember, he embarrassedly asked her to forget about everything he had just said. He was furious that he had been worrying all this time for nothing. The girl tried to calm the Duke, but he still felt awkward. Suddenly, Sena called Carlman. She smiled and thanked the Duke for his trust and for telling him what happened then. The Duke was embarrassed by such words. Then, Sena asked why he didn't go to the room to sleep, because the sofa was probably uncomfortable. Sena began to talk about the importance of a good rest, and promised to wake her up immediately if she heard the slightest noise. Listening to the heroine's long lectures, the Duke asked if she really saw him as a child. Having received no answer, he decided to live up to his appearance and moved closer to Sena. He settled down next to the girl and said that he would sleep there. Sena did not object. So they fell asleep in warmth and comfort. Morning has come. That night, Sena still fell asleep. The half-asleep girl felt someone's hair in her hand. Opening her eyes, she saw Dion's face in front of her. The heroine was stunned. She was speechless from surprise. Besides, the guy was already normal. The extremely surprised heroine asked why she was on the bed. Dion replied that he brought her there because he thought she was not comfortable on the sofa. He was about to leave immediately, but the girl did not let go of his hair. Hearing this, the girl abruptly removed her hand and was about to move away. But Dion grabbed her other hand and said that the Duke had also returned to his age and had gone after Aaron. This meant that only Dion and Sena remained in the house. The guy invited the girl to breakfast, but the joint breakfast did not work out. Sena had to have breakfast with Robin, listening to his stories. Sometimes she made some comments so as not to seem rude. However, she only thought that Dion had left without breakfast due to urgent matters. And although she was counting on a quiet meal, she ran into Robin. After hearing Robin's stories, Sena realized that Reviolta had fixed everything by making everyone think they had passed out from drinking. In this situation, it's true that the easiest way was to blame alcohol for everything. Robin was sure that he drank a lot due to lack of work. He said that he was thinking about returning to his hometown, especially since they promised him a job there. Sena supported his idea. But Robin turned to Sena with an unexpected proposal. He invited the heroine to go there together. Robin turned red as a tomato at his own words. Sena didn't understand why she should go there. The guy tried to somehow get out, saying that there he could help her find a job. He also began to talk about the city itself and its merits. He even talked about the local climate. But even such a long speech failed to convince Sena. She gave a clear refusal because she has unfinished business. The upset guy apologized for not taking her circumstances into account. Since they finished eating, Sena suggested leaving already. After leaving the restaurant, they continued to walk together and talk. Suddenly, Sena smelled the delicious smell of livers and immediately thought of buying some for the Duke and Dion. Noticing the girl's intentions, Robin offered to buy it for her. But Dion suddenly appeared and said that it was not worth it, since he would buy it himself. Robin was startled by surprise. Sena immediately approached Dion and talked to him. Seeing their casual conversation, Robin asked who he was. Then Sena introduced them to each other. 
Dion immediately remembered Robin's name. They sealed their acquaintance with a handshake and exchanged pleasantries. Suddenly, Sena noticed that Dion's hair was disheveled. Out of habit, she helped correct them. While at the same time, taking advantage of the situation, Dion proudly showed Robin how close he and the heroine were. To Robin, they looked like a couple in love. Without missing an opportunity, Dion noted that Sena had brushed him well in the morning. The words reached their destination and, as expected, Robin misinterpreted them. To finally finish off his opponent, Dion proudly declared that in the morning he and Sena were together. Technically, this was not a lie, so the girl did not deny anything. When Dion asked why she wanted to buy cookies, the heroine replied that she was going to treat him and Sasha. Hearing another man's name, Robin was completely confused. All his plans collapsed overnight. He considered himself Sena's closest person. However, it was now obvious that this was not the case. Next to Dion, she smiled brightly. Unable to withstand this atmosphere, Robin ran away. He mentally said goodbye to the heroine and wished her happiness. Sena was the only one who did not understand the reason for such an act. The next day, Sena learned from Anna that Robin had gotten drunk and was crying his eyes out. But Sena had no idea why he was suffering so much. Based on yesterday's conversation, the girl suggested that Robin was upset about ending his career. However, this was definitely not the case. There was some commotion in the association. The hunters were excitedly discussing something. Suddenly, Dale and Isabella Fravel entered the guild. Everyone was surprised by the sudden visit of the head. Even Anna didn't know why they came. Sena and Anna began to jokingly divide the association's property in case it was suddenly closed. In Sena's eyes, Dale looked like a terrible person. She still remembered Dion's words that he didn't even come to his own wife's funeral. Dion was nothing like him. And Sena was happy about it. Suddenly, Anna remembered the reason why she called the heroine. The administrator offered her a good job with decent pay, but Sena tried to politely refuse, since the money that the Duke pays for rent is quite enough for her. However, Anna clarified that the client asked her specifically, so it would not be possible to transfer the order to someone else. Sena suggested that the customer might be some kind of hermit, but her friend calmed her down, saying that it was the other way around. Hearing the employer's name, Sena blushed with happiness. It turned out to be Owen, an S-Class hunter. Sena has long admired him because he is one of the best hunters who has not failed more than one task, as well as the youngest hunter to reach this rank. He is not just a scientist, but a world-recognized archaeologist. He is adored by both hunters and ordinary people. Sena was delighted, but still did not understand why such a person would hire her. The document said that he needed a hunter who knew Polician. However, Sena was not very confident in her knowledge of the Polesian language, but she was deeply touched that Owen appreciated her skills and chose her. She was proud that she was chosen out of everyone. Sena believed that working with Owen was a gift from God. Deciding to tease her friend, Anna took the documents back since Sena was going to refuse, but the heroine immediately stopped her, enthusiastically informing her that she was accepting the order. Having signed all the documents, she headed to the meeting with the customer. Owen lived in a huge mansion. The butler greeted her at the entrance. He politely invited the guest home. For Sena, such treatment was a little unusual. The butler escorted the heroine to his master. There were many statues placed in the corridor, and they were all directed as if they were watching passers-by. This made it creepy. The butler announced that he would escort Sena to Owen's office. Suddenly, the heroine spotted a huge picture on the wall, which depicted a young girl with golden hair and eyes, and at her feet lay the corpses of killed little demons. The girl was stunned to see demons in the picture. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a man wearing a skull mask appeared next to her. The girl was taken by surprise, but the guy was amused by her reaction. Taking off his mask, Owen apologized and introduced himself. The girl also introduced herself and thanked her for the invitation. Looking at him again, she remembered something. He's one of the contenders for the male lead she saw on the cover. Owen acted kindly towards Sena. Having finished with the greeting, they settled down in the office. All this time, the heroine's head was filled with the question of how it happened that the contender for the leading male role was dating her and not Ellen. She no longer wanted to interfere with the original plot. Her thoughts were interrupted by Owen's words that he had always wanted to meet her. He said that he liked the stories of her exploits during the expedition to Scalo, and the guy was also impressed to learn that Sena fought the demon all night to protect her wounded friends. The heroine was glad to know that such a high-ranking hunter treated her with respect. 
Thanks to that incident with the demon, she was promoted to C rank, but immediately after that, she was demoted again. Owen had also heard of Sena's many nicknames. However, among all the nicknames, Sena disliked it most when she was called immortal. She thought it was childish because she was just a little stronger and recovered faster than others. But Owen, on the contrary, considered these qualities exceptional and was confident that Sena could achieve the same rank as him. However, the heroine was not confident in her abilities. Suddenly, the guy asked if she was interested in ancient ruins, to which Sena honestly answered that she was not. Owen thought exploring ancient ruins could be a lot of fun, but Sena knew that for this type of work, you need to have financial stability. Hearing this, Owen asked if she didn't have someone who could support her, but the girl didn't understand who she was talking about. Then the guy directly said that he meant Duke Carlman. Owen suggested that he would be happy to help Sena, but the girl directly said that she would not accept his help. After all, for her, he is just an acquaintance. Hearing this answer, Owen felt relieved and said that the reason he called her was because he was interested in her, but he is also interested in Duke Carlman. After this phrase, all her fantasies were shattered. She decided to ask directly whether Owen needed financial support from the Duke, but he didn't need investments. There was another very important question. Owen asked Sena if she had any encounters with the creatures while she was with the Duke. But realizing that Carlman was trying to keep it a secret, she lied, saying that she had never encountered it. Owen didn't expect this answer. Sena was confused, not understanding how the hunter could know about this, even if the investigation department was not in the know. There was silence for some time. Owen spoke first. He wanted to tell the heroine an old story. Running his hand through the books, he was looking for a specific book. Finding the book he needed, he took it out and opened it. The girl was dumbfounded that in such a situation, Owen decided to read some kind of story. And so he began his story. History said that long ago, there were demons who opened the gates of hell and entered this earth, where they took pleasure in human torment. Some were physically hurt. Others were pushed towards their own downfall. They liked to turn people against each other in order to lead them to death. They also brought hellish evil into this world. This evil force polluted the earth and modified its flora and fauna, as a result of which creatures appeared, which are commonly called creatures. Demonic power also affected people. Some lost their minds and turned into creatures themselves. Others absorbed the power and became magicians. And the latter, capable of purifying demonic energy, became priests. The priests managed to exterminate most of the demons, but they could not find a way to destroy the demonic commanders. Therefore, they decided to seal the souls of the 33 high demons in the sacred empire. These 33 souls are still securely sealed there to this day, but recently three of those souls disappeared without a trace. Owen said that he was tracking down three escaped demons at the request of the empire. It is known that there were five families who helped the priests seal away the higher demons. They are the only ones in the empire who know about the seal and the only ones who can access them, and the Carlman family is one of these five. But the story turned out to be too long, and Sena fell asleep before she could finish listening. Hearing her name, she immediately woke up. Seeing Sena sleeping, Owen assumed that his story was too boring. But Sena tried to apologize by saying that she had simply never been interested in legends. She kept yawning and saying that everything was fine. But Owen wasn't going to end there. He brought the next book for the second story. Sena hoped that the stories were already over. The next story was that creatures appear from the power of demons, so they tend to follow them, like children following their parents. Sena already automatically agreed with everything, if only the story would end quickly. Owen continued his story, According to the book, even when sealed, demons are able to summon creatures. That's why if Duke Carlman has one of these stones, then the creatures will definitely appear next to him. Owen also said that he is looking for more than just demons, but also a priestess. Sena immediately understood who he was talking about. Owen also noticed her interest. He suggested listening to the next story, which she would definitely like. The girl realized that she had made a mistake, and her facial expression gave her away. It was written all over Owen's face that Sena had been caught. The heroine was already trying to come up with excuses, expecting a barrage of questions from the hunter. But he didn't ask anything. Owen began his tale of the first priestess who sacrificed herself to seal away the 33 greater demons. And this seal continues to hold them back to this day. However, there is one caveat. Each generation necessarily has its own priestess, and her blood is the only way to break the seal. 
According to information, Duke Carlman is searching for a certain woman. And if he plans to get rid of the seals, then he needs to get rid of him. This is for the greater good. Hearing the last phrase, the girl jumped out of her seat and repeated once again that she knew nothing. Then Owen suggested that she just ask him directly. The girl was shocked. She was furious because the hunter ignored everything she said. Realizing that further conversation made no sense, Sena said goodbye and headed towards the exit. Owen also said goodbye to her with a smile. One of the sheets about demons fell right in front of Sena. It depicted a crying demon, and there was an inscription above the picture. It was translated from Polian as lie. The next day, Sena found a huge pile of different things on her doorstep. She wanted to return everything, but the employee literally begged her not to do this, because otherwise he would be punished. In the end, she agreed to leave everything. The worker immediately handed her the remaining boxes and rushed home before the girl changed her mind. The girl stood there with these unnecessary boxes, not knowing what to do with them. To begin with, she decided to let them go to Earth. She kept thinking about Owen's owls. She was tormented by the question whether the Duke had really never been in love with Ellen. Remembering all the time they spent together, Sena realized that while he was next to her, he never once thought about Ellen. Aaron also never said that the Duke loved Ellen. Rather, he described her as an important person for the Duke. The role of the priestess was also perfect for Ellen. Moreover, considering that her blood is connected with demons, this is the best option for developing the plot. In Sena's head, the story looked like this. The antagonist goes in search of Ellen to break the seal. The main male characters stand up for her, and over time she falls in love. And Sena, as her neighbor, is destined to experience constant stress because of all these demonic creatures. Initially, Sena believed that the Duke was the main male character, but now she also accepts the idea that he could be an antagonist. Her thoughts were interrupted by Dion suddenly appearing. When Sena asked if he went home, the guy slyly replied that he did. Seeing a huge pile of boxes, Dion thought that the heroine was shopping, but Sena said that these were all gifts. In fact, the girl was worried that she would have to deal with them alone, but she was lucky that Dion was nearby. The guy helped her, but still he was wondering who all this was from. Suddenly, Sena screamed. She looked at the box in shock. There was a whole bunch of mana crystals there. She couldn't even imagine how much it all cost. Dion suggested checking the rest of the boxes and bags, too. Sena looked at the stones and thought that she should return everything back, since he could not accept such an expensive gift. However, given how many stones there are, she assumed that no one would even notice if she took a couple. After checking, Dion reported that some of the boxes contained mana tools that looked quite expensive. Having overcome her greed, she put the stones back and decided to return everything. However, it was impossible to leave everything outside, so she asked Dionk to bring everything into the house. Seeing how easily Dion lifted the boxes, Sena was surprised. She thought the boxes were heavy. After all, Owen's servant could barely carry two boxes. To begin with, they decided to take everything to the second floor. But Dion was haunted by the question of who gave such a gift to Sena. Since talking about Owen would take too long, the heroine decided not to mention his name. She replied that it was one of her friends. Dion was not happy about this. From such an expression on his face, Sena turned pale. As a result, she was unable to sleep. All night, the heroine tried to remember at least something from her past life, but to no avail. The Duke prepared breakfast as usual and set the table. Seeing Sena's expression, he thought she didn't like it. Sena was preoccupied with thoughts about the ceiling stone. At the same time, the Duke was looking forward to the evaluation of his food. Not hearing the usual praise, he offered to cook something else. But Sena said that there was no need, since everything was very tasty. Having learned that she liked the food, the Duke also started breakfast. But still, he was interested in what happened while he was gone, because it was obvious that Dion was not in a good mood. Sena didn't know how to explain this. After all, he has been like this since Sena said that the gifts were from an acquaintance. Dion got up from the table without even finishing, which was unusual for him. Sena and Carlman were surprised because he usually eats more than everyone else. But Dion just sat silently on the couch, didn't say anything, and didn't ask anything. Seeing such unusual behavior of Dion, the Duke thought that he and Sena had quarreled. But the girl claimed that they did not quarrel, and moreover, she did not even know what he was angry about. Carlman offered his help. He said that he could ask him instead. He also wanted to tell them the latest news, but it was difficult to do so in such an atmosphere. Dion continued to watch them silently. 
The Duke also said that Aaron had to bring him something, and as soon as he arrived, he asked for an opportunity to explain everything. Sena was very happy, because the Duke would finally tell everything he knew about demons. However, seeing how Dion looked away every time, Sena decided to make the first move. She said that she would go get some cake, since Dion loves sweets. The Duke happily supported this idea. Seeing Carlman's bright smile, the heroine became more and more convinced that he could not be a hidden villain. Dion desperately wanted to join the conversation, but was still sulking. To compete with Dion, Sena bought the most delicious cake in the hope that he would like it. But suddenly, someone called the girl and distracted her. Turning around, she saw that it was Owen. Running to Sena, he said that they had a huge problem. Owen asked where the mana tools he gave were located. The girl replied that she was at home and said that she was just about to return them. But he said that they do not have time, since there is a rather strange object among the tools and they need to hurry, otherwise the house may explode. The girl was speechless from shock. She was petrified with horror. After all, her house could fly into the air. She immediately rushed home. Sena was simply furious, so much so that she did not pay attention to Owen's screams. Finally reaching home, she was convinced that everything was normal. No traces of an explosion were found. However, even if everything was fine now, that didn't mean that thing wouldn't explode later. She immediately asked Owen to tell her what kind of thing it was so she could return it. But the guy replied that it was dangerous because if she wasn't careful, it would explode right in her hands. Turning pale with fear, Sena asked why he would even send something like that to her. But Owen could only apologize. Sena said that all the gifts were in the room on the second floor and asked them to quickly pick up what they needed. She only asked to sort this out as quickly as possible. But suddenly she remembered that the Duke was in the house and Owen suspects him. And the worst thing is that he is even ready to get rid of it. Therefore, their meeting could not be allowed, but she didn't have time to stop him. However, fortunately, the Duke was not there. She didn't understand where the Duke and Dion were now, so she didn't know how to proceed. Thinking that they had gone somewhere, Sena was happy. She let Owen home. The girl quickly prepared tea for him. She said that all the things he sent were on the second floor, but he suddenly said that he suspected that there was a thief in the house. When she saw the gun, the girl was very scared and asked to put it away since there was no one at home, but Owen insisted. He showed Sena shoe prints on the floor that clearly did not belong to her. Based on this, Owen was sure that there was someone in the house. Sena tried to convince him, but she couldn't tell the truth. Suddenly, the guy revealed his true intentions, saying that the most important thing now was not the possibility of an explosion. He asked permission to inspect her house. However, this was his goal from the very beginning. He came to catch the Duke. Sena tried to stop him, continuing to say that there was no thief in her house. However, catching the thief was only a pretext, so Owen turned a deaf ear to everything. Suddenly, footsteps were heard and the girl turned pale, realizing that the Duke was probably still in the house. Owen immediately went to the source of the sound. The girl was in a panic. She didn't know what to do or how to stop him. Owen was serious about catching the Duke. Having found the right room, he sharply opened the door and pointed the gun at the unknown person. But someone knocked the gun from his hands. The Duke grabbed the stranger, and Dion picked up the gun. He walked slowly towards Owen. He put the gun to his head and asked if it was worth shooting, but they were stopped by Sena. Thinking she was coming to help, Owen begged her to stop them. But the heroine was not going to help. She just said that if they were going to finish him off, then let them do it on the street. Dion and the Duke unanimously replied that they planned to do so. Owen didn't expect this turn of events. He was tied up for further questioning. The Duke, Sena, and Dion stood before him. Trying to hide his emotions, he greeted Duke Carlman, but he didn't even remember him. Owen claimed that they met three times, but Carlman still could not remember. Owen was ready to kill him with one look, while the Duke did not even notice it. Suddenly, he turned to Dion, asking who he was, because they had never crossed paths before. After hearing a lecture from Owen on how to properly hold a gun, Dion decided to show how much he could do. Realizing that Dion was not so simple, Owen began to beg for Sena to take him away. The heroine didn't even know what to do, because Owen provoked Dion more and more with every word. Looking at him, Sena remembered their last meeting. After all, then she really was happy. But now everything was different. She asked Owen to honestly answer the question of whether he had come to kill the Duke. Owen was outraged by such suspicions. But the heroine reminded him that he was the first to lie, saying that the gifts contained explosives. 
Hearing this, Dion realized that the one who sent those gifts was Owen. He hastened to clarify whether Owen had done this because of some personal feelings for Sena, and only when he heard a negative answer did he calm down. Owen honestly said that he only wanted to return the sealing stone that the previous Duke Carlman had stolen and find the saint. Owen was sure that Sena was a saint. With this statement, he stunned the heroine, and not only her, the Duke was also shocked, and Dion was no less surprised. After these words, they tried to imagine Sena as a saint, and when they imagined it, they couldn't hold back their laughter. They were all wondering how the guy came to this conclusion. Then Owen said that he had heard rumors that she was famous for her healing abilities, but Sena denied all these rumors. Also, the rumors that she is immortal are lies, and on top of that, the heroine hates the temple. She's sick of people in white, and she's not close to just one priest. In addition, the heroine never healed anyone using holy power. The only thing she has is excellent health. Owen was shocked to learn that he was mistaken about the saint. Then he asked the duke about the sealing stone. But Carlman swore on the behalf of his family that such a thing had never happened. After which, he seriously wondered where he had even heard such nonsense. Owen asked to check the inside pocket of his jacket. There was a ring there. Dion and the Duke assumed it was a fake. Only Sena did not know what it was. The Duke explained that this was the Saint Emperor's ring. Dion took the ring from Carlman to confirm its authenticity. Having said this, he threw the ring away. But the ring suddenly disappeared, and then it appeared on Owen's finger. Thus, they were convinced that the ring was real. Owen also recalled that he had already said that he had received a request from the Holy Empire. However, Sena forgot everything since she was half asleep at the time. Since Owen showed his ring, he asked the Duke to show his too, but Carlman replied that he did not have a ring. He said that it disappeared 30 years ago. Since the ring cannot be taken away by force, it was difficult to believe that it could disappear. The Duke was definitely hiding something. Owen didn't trust anyone. Dion watched everyone. Sena was shocked by this whole situation. In fact, there is more than one Saint Emperor ring. There are five more that are copies of the original with the same shape and features. They also return to their owner if they move a certain distance away from him. The very first saint gave them to five different families, symbolizing a promise to watch over the sealed demons together and keep their existence a secret. But 30 years ago, the man with the Carlman family ring escaped with the stone in which the demon was imprisoned. And recently, hunters have witnessed a strange influx of mutated creatures, which is why the magicians from the search department of the association went on a long-term business trip. Hearing this, Sena realized that she was wrong in her suspicions. The detective department simply decided to look into the situation. While all this was happening, Duke Carlman arrived in the capital and began searching for the woman, and it looked very suspicious. Listening to Owen, Sena understood that although his judgment was not ideal, it was not unfounded. Sena kept thinking again and again about whether the Duke had another goal. At that moment, Aaron arrived on time as always. Seeing the terrible picture in front of him, he decided not to intervene. He was speechless from fear. However, immediately realizing, he decided to leave. But Sena stopped him. She tried to explain everything to him. Interrupting their conversation, the Duke asked him to give him what he had brought. It was an ordinary diary, but the smell from it was so terrible that I didn't even want to touch it. It seemed that even if you just opened it, you'd be damned. The Duke explained that they had already checked everything and there was nothing wrong with the notepad. At this time, Dion came up with something. He took the diary and headed towards Owen. The guy immediately felt alarmed and began screaming for Dion not to come near. But Dion, with the help of magic, partially untied his hands. And in exactly the same way, I forced him to take the diary. Then he ordered it to be opened. But Owen was also afraid that he would be cursed. However, Dion insisted, recalling that the Duke had previously said that everything was fine. Sena also supported Dion's idea. Then the Duke offered to open it himself. But Owen refused, saying he didn't trust him. Although he was terrified, he managed to overcome his fear. As Carlman said, there was no curse. These were the recordings of one man. He was locked in the basement, where Marquis Euclid conducted experiments on him. At some point, the unknown person realized that he could control the dark smoke at his fingertips. Seeing this, the Marquise was delighted and exclaimed that he was producing mana, and they were almost there. The Marquis collected this smoke into a bottle. After this, the narrator's memories are interrupted. After some time, the Marquis dragged a blonde girl into his cell. She cried and said that she was scared. Seeing this, 
the narrator asked her to stop crying and asked her what her name was. The child answered Ellen. At that moment, the narrator instinctively realized that her blood was used for the experiments. This story was also part of Ellen's story. Having finished reading, they closed the diary. Dion was surprised by what he learned. The Duke already knew about this, so he observed the reactions of others. Sena was horrified. She couldn't believe that someone had gone through such an experiment. The Duke said that two years ago, he accidentally ran into the person who entered this diary. Based on the records, the Marquis tried to use the blood of St. Helen to break the seal and revive the demon race. However, whether he succeeded or not is still unknown, since that man's magic was quite weak and unstable. Besides, he could not go far from the Marquis's estate, most likely because he still needed Ellen's blood. Returning the diary, Owen asked where this man was now. The Duke replied that he did not know because he had missed him. Carlman did not know where he was now, but the Duke found the place where he lived before. It was there that they found the diary. The Duke showed the diary to the Emperor, and he ordered that Ellen's safety be ensured first. That's why, when Carlman found her, he first suggested going to the Carlman estate. But Ellen refused. This was the perfect plan for her protection, so it was unfortunate for the Duke to be refused. He suggested that maybe it was because Ellen didn't like him. After hearing this story, Sena realized that it was her failure and felt guilty towards both Ellen and the Duke. When Ellen asked about the creatures that appear in the capital, the Duke replied that most likely they were sent by a demon in order to get Ellen's blood. But there were some problems with the barrier, so it did not function properly. At this point, all Imperial magicians have been sent to investigate the problem. After hearing the whole truth, Sena felt guilty for suspecting the Duke. After all, he was not a stalker at all. The Duke was only trying to protect Ellen. Sena blamed herself for ruining everything. Seeing her in this state, Zeon became worried. The Duke blamed himself for everything. He believed that he had not made enough efforts. The more the Duke blamed himself, the more Sena blamed herself. She tried to atone for her guilt a little by saying words of consolation. The Duke sheepishly thanked him for the kind words. In order to calm her conscience, she continued to support the Duke. The Duke asked Sena what she was going to do after everything she had heard. The heroine replied that, as before, she would defend her home. The same went for Ellen's safety. Sena wanted to suggest telling Ellen everything, but she was interrupted by Owen. Only now did the Duke realize that he had also heard their entire conversation. They were both wary of each other. It was obvious that they would not be friends. Looking at Dion, Sena thought that he was most likely shocked to learn about Ellen's past. Suddenly, the heroine turned to Diona. She invited him with her. Dion followed her without hesitation. Arriving in the living room, Sena asked if Dion was worried about this whole situation. Having received a positive answer, the heroine said that she understood what feelings he was experiencing. Hearing this, Dion excitedly asked when she found out. Sena replied that not long ago. Dion was embarrassed that his feelings had been revealed. Sena, trying to support him, said that she knew how long he had liked her. Hearing the last phrase, Dion realized that they were talking about different girls. He hastened to stop her and asked who she was talking about now. Sena answered that it was about Ellen because because of her refusal, he even cried in front of her house. She also said that she knew all along that Dion had not given up on Ellen. However, since Ellen is a saint, she will always be in danger. Dion no longer said anything, but only listened to Sena. But the heroine suddenly suggested that Dion should no longer come to her home. Dion was dumbfounded. Sena believed that she was doing this for the safety of Dion. She also added that there is no need to worry about Ellen since the Duke will protect her. Having heard all the girls' arguments, Dion realized that Sena believed that he was in danger. However, he did not understand why she thought so. Sena explained that due to his lack of combat experience, he could get hurt during battles with demons. Then Dion reminded that he was a magician, but Sena remembered everything including the fact that he almost died due to loss of mana control. It was then that the girl realized the seriousness of the situation. She tried her best to convince him, but he believed that he could also be useful. That's why I asked him not to prohibit me from coming there anymore. Sena was weak in the face of such an expression. She couldn't say no to that cute face. Therefore, during the refusal, she turned away so as not to give in. She couldn't put him in danger. To convince him to back down, she talked about how terrible demons can be, but Dion simply remained silent. Suddenly, he asked if she really wanted to make him out to be a scoundrel who ignored danger. He couldn't believe that Sena wanted him to leave everyone and run away. Sena had nothing to answer to this. 
He once again covered himself with Ellen, saying that he wanted to protect her himself and asked permission to come to this house. After so many arguments, Sena had exhausted all reasonable reasons for refusal. She agreed, but on one condition. Dion agreed without hesitation to fulfill any of her requests. He was ready for anything. After some time, the Duke joined them. When he asked what they were doing, Dion furiously replied that he should take a closer look. Dion, sitting surrounded by books, read a book about demons. The Duke was about to leave when Sena noticed him and called him to join. She had a huge stack of books in her hands. Seeing so many books, he asked what they were for. Dion, having received another pile of books to read, turned pale with horror. Sena explained to the Duke that these were all books about demons and demonic creatures. They are needed to prepare for the next battles. The heroine explained that in order to win, they need to learn more about their enemies. She did not even allow Dion to take a break from books. She also told the Duke that Ellen and Dion have known each other since childhood, but due to memory loss, Ellen does not remember this. It is for this reason that Dion also wants to deal with the creatures along with them. While they were talking, Dion did not know where to get away from these books. Sena also prepared a stack of books for the Duke. She asked questions to determine his level of training and to find out about his combat experience. Having finished with the part about demons, Sena moved on to another very important issue. She offered to tell Ellen everything, but the Duke believed that this was impossible. Suddenly, Ellen knocked on the door. Recognizing the neighbor's voice, Sena went to open it. The Duke offered to talk to her right away. Although the Duke considered it impossible, he still thought that there was no harm in trying. For starters, he thought that he and Dion should leave. Sena waited until the guys went up to the second floor. Only after that did she open the door. A sweet neighbor was standing on the threshold. She brought cookies for Sena. She also said that she had some gift for the heroine. Sena invited her into the house and treated her to tea. While she was waiting for Sena, she noticed a dragon figurine and thought it was some kind of magical object. But the heroine said that it was an ordinary lamp, and she only bought it because it looked cool. Although in fact, she only bought it because Dion liked it. Ellen was surprised to learn that it was an ordinary lamp. Sena felt awkward because she didn't know how to start a conversation. That's why I decided to start with cookies. But the basket contained more than just livers. Ellen sheepishly explained that it was a homemade ointment. She prepared it, noticing the wound on Sena's hand. Ellen apologized for bringing the ointment so late. Sena never talked about her injury, so she didn't expect Ellen to notice. However, she was touched by Ellen's concern. The neighbor clarified that she was not a doctor, but asked to accept the gift. Sena was incredibly happy with the gift. Ellen was also happy that her work was appreciated. Sena was touched by the kindness of the main character, but she forced herself to pull herself together as a serious conversation was ahead. Sena decided to start by asking where she was before she opened a flower shop. Ellen replied that she was not entirely sure, since all her memories were blurry. She said that people from the temple found her unconscious in the forest, they gave her shelter and work, and Ellen spent all her earned money on opening a flower shop. For some reason, her name is the only thing Ellen remembers clearly. She also didn't remember her parents, but she didn't want to look for them either. Ellen showed an old scar on her forehead and said that she had a feeling that her past life was not good. Sena was furious at the way Ellen was treated by her family. Noticing Sena's anger, Ellen gently took her hand. She tried to calm her down, saying that there was no need to worry, because since she moved here, only good people surrounded her. And most of all, she was glad that she met Sena. She was grateful to Sena for always protecting her. Looking at the happy lady in front of her, Sena doubted her intentions, because the past would only cause Ellen pain. Because Sena was lost in thought, she held Ellen's hand for too long. But still, since Ellen's safety was at issue, she felt it would be right to tell her everything. Then she asked Ellen if she knew the Marchioness of Euclid, but for some reason the neighbor did not hear the question. Then she asked again, much louder this time, but the result was the same. Not understanding what was happening, Sena shouted out her question. Ellen was silent for a while, but suddenly she said that she couldn't hear what Sena was saying at all. After Ellen left, Sena was in prostration. She did not understand why it was necessary to make sure that Ellen could not even hear the name of the Marquis. Dion replied that most likely it was entirely Ellen's choice, since the magician probably did everything exactly as she asked. Sena was slightly surprised by the cold tone in which he spoke about her. Suddenly, 
Dion remembered that he had previously mentioned the name of the Marquis in a conversation with Ellen and suggested that she did not want to hear this name at all due to the fact that there were too many painful memories associated with it. Sena couldn't even imagine what the child had to do so that he wouldn't even listen to his name. All this time, they were overheard by Owen, who also learned that Ellen did not hear the name of the Marquis. A few hours ago, Owen stood at Sena's door, thinking that there was something suspicious about the Duke. He could easily forge the diary, and he avoided questions about the ring. The first thing he decided to do was talk to Sena again. But Ellen stood at the threshold. Seeing her, Owen immediately hid. While watching her, he saw the girl enter Sena's house. And later, the loud voice of the heroine was heard, who, for reasons unknown to Owen, continued to shout the name of the Marquis. Then he got closer to figure out what was happening. And having heard the girl's conversation, she realized that Ellen did not hear the name Euclid at all. Now back to the present, where Sena, Dion, and the Duke are discussing their future plans. Sena voiced her decision, saying that she would protect her home and at the same time help protect Ellen. However, she immediately indicated that she would only fight with creatures and did not want to get involved with the Marquis and demons. The Duke accepted her terms and happily thanked her for her help. Owen was shocked by this expression on Carlman's face. This man is a cold-blooded monster who killed all the members of his family who stood in his way. And now he thanked the commoner with such a stupid smile. To say that Owen was shocked by this would be an understatement. Suddenly, Sena felt something, but Owen managed to hide. Having finished the discussion, Sena invited everyone to return to their work. The hunter was relieved to realize that he had not been noticed. But after finishing talking about the creatures, they began to discuss everyday things. Dion asked the Duke to prepare dinner. Sena was incredibly happy and asked what exactly the Duke was going to cook. And Carlman proudly said that he was working on one dish. Owen looked at them with his mouth open and eyes wide because he thought that they would discuss a new plan or talk about Ellen. He couldn't believe they were going to leave it like that. But in any case, he did not trust the Duke and was thinking about how to get close to him unnoticed. Then he remembered Sena's close relationship with the Duke and found a solution. The next day, Sena's face contorted in surprise. Owen stood at her doorstep again and said that he had come to accept his punishment. The girl did not understand what he was talking about and why he looked so joyful, asking for punishment. Seeing that the girl was silent, he himself offered to beat himself as much as she wanted. Thinking that he was a pervert, Sena asked him to leave immediately. But Owen insisted he wanted to sincerely apologize for his wrongdoings. He gave a long speech about how sorry he was. He said that he usually acts more rationally, but this time his legs ran ahead of his head because he thought that the Duke was threatening her. Having finished his speech, Owen was pleased with himself because he believed that it was just a perfect apology. However, the heroine had a different opinion. As soon as Owen finished his speech, she said goodbye and slammed the door. Owen was simply shocked he expected a different reaction. Sena walked irritably to her room, not understanding why she had to listen to all this nonsense early in the morning. When Dion asked who it was, Sena replied that he was an extremely persistent delivery man. Owen continued to scream and call for Sena. Hearing his voice, Dion immediately knew who it was. 